Hey, what's up everybody? Robert Marzullo here with Ram Studio Comics bringing you another video. And this one I want to kind of explain uh, an action pose or action sequence that I'm getting ready to draw. Uh, this is uh, of the Blackstone Eternal comic book which is uh, uh, produced by yours truly. Um, it's my own character that I've created and uh, self-published. And uh, you can watch some videos on that here if you'd like. But essentially what I'm trying to show on this one, I've had a few requests for how I might draw action videos or action shots so let me kind of explain this uh, I've already kind of roughed out my thumbnail here and I kind of pinballed around uh, from a couple different shots but this is what I uh, eventually landed on uh, going with so all I'll do now is just kind of keep refining this uh, figure out what uh, what elements of this sketch I want to keep and you know what details in the background I might do um, this is where uh, uh, the bounty hunter Krem uh, finds Blackstone and uh, tries to apprehend him. So um, Blackstone's still trying to deal with the uh, the fact that he just got this alien bonded to his back, and now he's got this uh, bounty hunter after him, which he doesn't know why. But you know that all uh, unfolds in the first couple episodes of uh, the Blackstone book. So this is actually going to be a scene from uh, book two. So I'm just kind of sketching this in, doing some uh, detail work, trying to find, you know, where I want the anatomy to go, and, you know, he's kind of lunging at Blackstone, trying to rip through him with his claws, but uh, actually, let me kind of get this hand drawn in here, um, and he quickly realizes that that's not going to be as easy as he thought, because, you know, Blackstone's, uh, one of his key abilities, or uh, strongest abilities, is his, uh, his impenetrable skin so that's kind of his, his strong suit you know he's got other other cool little features about him but that's his uh, that's his main not so much a power but main attribute so now as far as action poses uh, you know a lot of people might ask you know you know where do you come up with ideas for these I do a lot of gesture drawing just scribbling uh, different scene if I see a, a scene that I like in a book I'll scribble it a couple times not the whole scene I'll just kinda get the feel for what the other artists might have been putting down like with the um, uh, they're usually called gesture drawings but I'll even you know I'll get the motion and the the feel of what that uh, that person might have been trying to convey in their drawing um, I'll draw from uh, life from you know dance scenes uh, uh, you know uh, fighting uh, scenes are really good you know just google any kind of uh, fight scenes whether it be professional you know MMA stuff uh, you know boxing whatever but um, even some Olympic stuff and then just you know look at the way the body moves in those uh, situations and those are those are probably the best way to warm up because they're real so you're gonna you know other people are gonna identify with your drawings better if you do that but also the uh, the intensity of the motion is there you know you can't even really get that as much of that in uh, you know pulling from movies and and getting act you know actors and actresses uh, their shots to look like that because in all reality they're they're still acting but those people that are competing uh, aren't acting that's that's real life you know they're out there trying to do bodily harm to that other person so you get to see that intensity in that uh, in those shots so I definitely recommend uh, you know looking at that for your reference I always think like uh, in terms of you know like a good lunge pose um, uh, a truly good lunge for an attack uh, I don't know about good as far as like skill level but if if you really want to make it look like there's some uh, emotion in there and they're really trying to harm that other person uh, have have the lunge so uh, uh, so intense or so uh, what's the word there you know they're they're casting themselves with with basically no uh, you know no concern for their own body you know bodily safety they're they're trying to hurt that person so much that they're actually casting their own body into danger that that to me is going to look like a more intense at least a lunge of anger you know maybe not a, a controlled uh, attack where you might get that with more of the superhero character where he's more controlled and you know 
tethered when he goes to to attack or something like that. But maybe the villain does more of the you know crazy attack where he's just flying through the air and it doesn't care if he you know hits that guy and ten other people. So. So yeah, I'll just kind of start filling in some uh, line work, some shade, a little bit of shading. I'll start hinting around at this point as to where I want the light to affect. Uh, probably heard him clothe this guy so he doesn't look like he's running around naked. Uh, basically, he just kind of has this grass skirt. He's kind of more of a, he's an alien uh, creature, but he just dresses all, you know, kind of barbaric and, you know, tribalistic or whatever. He's a true monster, basically. And he's got these kind of like bone things that come around and they go over, over his head, his jaw, there's some here, some down on his chin. And again, just to make him look a little more tribal, there's these little bone things that go around. And let's see, that hand's alright. I'm thinking this one, maybe another claw kind of hand to the side. And you see how the first initial one is just really rough. I mean, just very rudimentary to see if it's going to, you know, I'm looking at, when I do stuff like that, these little lines that are representing the fingers, I'm looking at that more of a pose at this point. I'm not looking at it like, oh, yeah, it makes a good hand. Of course not. But I'm looking at the pose, and then I look at that proportionately and in uh, respect to the rest of the arm. And that's kind of how you save yourself a bunch of time from, drawing the wrong things, you know, it's like spotting stuff like that early on. Uh, I always wondered, you know, still wonder, because it's hard for me to produce a uh, uh, page a day like a lot of these guys do, but I'm doing my own ink, penciling, inking story, everything. But, you know, some of these guys did that and still uh, these pros would knock this stuff out and have time to spare. So it just amazes me at some of the time savers that you really would have to develop to do that. But, you know, it's not a, it's not unattainable. It's just with practice and, you know, using certain techniques, um, you're able to do that. You know, like and finding finding the uh, the stuff that works really well for you as far as speed goes. Uh, like I know I could do a, a a book a month if all I had to do was headshots. I mean, that's that would be easy, right? You know, so systematically place scenes like that, like the 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 headshot. You know things that you know that you're really fast at, uh, place those systematically and utilize that, you know, utilize silhouettes, util uh, utilize, um, like if I wanted to make this scene faster, I'm going to have to fill in a lot of detail because I got both, both these characters in mid to, uh, mid to full body shots almost, so I'm going to have a lot of detail to fill in, but to me this is a more impactful scene, so I want, I want that detail to, uh, you know, really show it off. Well, if I wanted to make this scene faster to draw, I could easily have taken it where uh, Krim's coming out at the camera a little bit more. You see a back shot of Blackstone up close and over his shoulder, and then next thing you know, this scene would have been uh, immensely faster and easier to draw. So, um, you, know, you don't always want to cheat like that, but there's sometimes with deadlines, I imagine you'd have to. Like I said, when I see uh, some of these pros that were able to knock stuff out like that, uh, they definitely have to be taking advantage of little techniques like that uh, to make it work. So, you, know, you don't always want to just draw your strong suit stuff, but, you know, timing is everything. Okay, and I think this pretty much will be the, the shapes that I go with. I, th I don't think I'll do a whole lot of changing here. I think I'm okay with, uh, with the setup I have here. Um, you know, I kind of like the, I don't know, the emotion in the scene. It's about right, you know. I didn't want Blackstone to look like he's, you know, running from this guy, but he's kind of on his back heels just kind of feeling him out. Um, you know, check. You know, seeing what his speed is and seeing how 
dangerous his character might be. So I think this is about the right emotion for this scene. Um, I typically would draw something like this a couple times to get it just right, but I think that this one should flow up, you know, pretty decent. So what I'll do now, uh, you know, because this obviously takes me a little while to draw this stuff in, uh, I just wanted to give you kind of an explanation of what this was about and, you know, show you where it was going, and then you tell me at the end if it uh, if it came out as, as good as you hoped it would. So I'm going to go ahead and time lapse this now, and I'll start filling in all the details, and you'll get to see how this scene uh, unfolds. And yeah, be sure to let me know what you think, like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff, share the video so I can get it out there. And, uh, you know, shameless plug time, be sure to check out Blackstone Eternal on Indie Planet and pick up your copy or copies if uh, you ever get a chance. So thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned.